um there was a little bit of a concern yesterday i was a little bit worried uh i i was a little bit worried here the price was falling underneath this kind of local point of control these levels that i had in mind i got a little bit worried i saw that there was a little bit of a a, a, a little bit of a break um but actually it just went up i took a hedge and i was invalidated i lost a bit of money on that hedge that's all right uh that's normal when you're trading uh i got immediately invalidated i closed my position and you know that's what a hedge is you just you're willing to risk a little bit just in case just in case the price does that um not a big deal i'm still well positioned in i haven't taken profit on my overall position um and so this is looking really healthy like slurf is looking really really bullish like ultra bullish for me um we're getting really strong price action to the upside so let me just quickly analyze slurf and look at the spider web let me get rid of these spiders um brush let me just get rid of all of this stuff now i don't think it matters get rid of all of that what's that one get rid of all of that i don't even know what it is now so i'll keep, I'll keep the folders so let's probably lower down okay and then i've got this triangle squeeze got the volume levels let me just hide these okay so that was the triangle squeeze we had from yesterday look it squeezed up that was nice to see um we've got these little volume ranges you see what's happening now of the price on slurf um we're back into this volume range you see this little volume range here we're back in i think that's pretty strong that's a sign of strength really to get back into a previous range that you've lost and you lost and you found resistance 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 broke up and now we're into it we're finding support of the of the the value area low of the previous range this is really uh what i'm seeing on slurf is really quite bullish i'm not seeing uh bearishness right now it's looking really good um let me just um, update my my volume levels now. Look at the day at the daily candle yesterday. I wanted the highest close as possible. Um, I think that was quite bullish. Look, you know, we had a little reaction off the daily level, but we went up and we took a large amount of liquidity. And then today, as the price opened, a little pullback, and then we're we're off. You know, we're up. We're going up. That's kind of what you want to see. It looks quite bullish, isn't it? Pretty much reversed most of the that red uh, obviously higher would have been better but you know that's that was because of bitcoin bitcoin scared everyone a little bit as it always does um when you're looking at this overall range you can see that we're at the bottom and you can see that we're starting to go up um let's see what happens i know that bitcoin is going to come into resistance soon so we have to see how the altcoins react uh when bitcoin does come into resistance um and I want to see where the altcoins come into resistance as Bitcoin comes into resistance. Uh, let me just update the volume area, volume range now, the volume. Let me have a look, see if there's any changes. Um, where's my volume? There it is. Okay. Um, No real changes. We're in a little bit of a volume dead zone here. So I would expect the price to move up quickly now if, if it wants to go up. Um, that's our volume. We can delete that now. Let me just have a look at this lower range as well and see. Yeah, on the lower range, we're above the point, um, the value area high now. You can see above the value area high it's back tested as support that's pretty good i think that's quite healthy um so 
I, I am I am expecting the price to go up. I don't I don't know what to say. Um, I am expecting the price to go up. Let me just do a a fib pull on this overall range again. For fib, I'd use the log. Um, people are curious to know why my charts look like this. I use the log with mythic chart, not the regular chart. Okay. So we are into a little bit of resistance now. It's the two three six or on the Fibonacci retracement from the pivot high on Bybit to the pivot low, the absolute pivot high to the absolute pivot low. Um, so we do need to flip that level into support at the moment. So we're finding a little bit of resistance. It's just Fib, it's just Fib resistance at the moment. Uh, and so once that flips into support, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a, a little bit of a pump. The reason why I'd be expecting a little bit of a pump is because the price here moved down quite quickly so i wouldn't be surprised if after we take out that high uh if the price moves up quite quickly um right now we're looking at changing four hour market structure the same as what i did with bitcoin this is the lower low this is the higher high potentially this is the higher low here and we have to now take out that high. We have to take out that high at, at 0 0.3287. Okay. You take out that high. That's a confirmation of market structure change to bullish. What also what I'm seeing here is a little bit of a inverse head and shoulders. It's a little bit complicated, but that's your right shoulder. That's like a complicated head. That's uh sorry, that's your right shoulder here. That was your left shoulder. Uh if we do get some kind of breakout, then you know, a measured move will take us into my area of resistance i'm going to identify that now for people to see um so i've got this big area of resistance above us and i just want people to be aware of it okay if anyone's watching so we have this volume levels we have the range point of control and we have the radium value area low they're roughly at the same area and then you've got this three eight three uh eight two fib and so the radium value area low is at 4060. The point of control, which is actually for me going to be the strongest level on this chart, because I'm using the Bybit uh, perpetual contracts, it's going to be at about 4180. And then you've got the, the 382 FIB retracement of the overall range is about 4252. Okay. So you have a little bit of confluence in the area uh there it's an area it's not an exact line and then also i've got my higher time frame levels here and what you see is that you have a a, a big weekly level that's not being traded through and a big daily level which is not being traded for roughly in the same area that's a big area of resistance there and so i don't expect the price to to get through it without acting without reacting yeah now in 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 there's two intermediary levels of resistance there's two daily levels there's the the, the nearest one to the price is at, is at 0 0.3422 and then the next one is at 0 0.3866 now they need to be flipped into support so you can't ignore those either um they need to be flipped into support for the price to continue going up if the price starts moving up i don't see why not because they're kind of on their own they're like these solo lone warrior areas of resistance um that that are waiting to be defeated so i don't really see a reason why we can't get past those um But we're here, let's see what happens, okay? You never know. And I think that's going to be largely to do with Bitcoin as well. I'd like to see, because I have a really uh, strong area of resistance on Bitcoin. I want to see where Slurf comes into resistance and to see how that coincides with Bitcoin, yeah? So obviously, if Slurf is coming into this first daily level, as Bitcoin hits its resistance, big resistance at the Bitcoin value area high, which I indicated in my earlier in the stream, uh, then I would be saying, well, actually, no, maybe this is a pretty good level 
to 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 hedge on slurf um so i'm kind of comparing those a little bit i think slurf is still leading you know i think slurf is still leading i, I think it's it's only a by a slight amount yeah it's not like by hours it's like literally by sometimes by 15 minutes or 30 minutes so if you suddenly see slurf go up morning missed the start now x announcement gary good morning welcome i'm i'm, I'm doing i've just been looking at slurf uh x announcement what is x announcement let's have a look gary is only talking about slurf when he comes onto this, my channel <laughs> what's the announcement Drop your wallets. I haven't done that. Was that the announcement? <laughs> oh, there's no announcement. Okay, he was he's fibbing. NFT index is live. Let's have a look at that. See that? <coughs> Excuse me. This is amazing. All right. Load more. So if anyone doesn't know, uh, I bought an NFT. <laughs> I'm waiting it for it to for it to be delivered. Gary's bought five. What I would like is one of these NFTs which says "Oh fuck" on it. I know there's one or two. There, that one. I didn't announce start. Do I normally announce the start? I never announced the start, did I? I just come on. Uh, these are all nicer. I like I like them all, actually. They've obviously put in a lot of work into these NFTs. And I hope they have some kind of value. <laughs> They're not just... Um, Yeah, I want one with glasses and I want one that says, oh, fuck, and maybe also a cigarette. This one, like that one. Phone died? Nah. Good take? Nah. Machine gun? <laughs> oh, you can filter at the top. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I wear glasses, shades. Cigarette. Perfect. None of them you have glasses and says, oh, fuck. Why is that? But this one has a cigarette and he's got a AK-47. <laughs> what the hell? And this has got a Coke can. Burn. No. Maybe not a cigarette. That's it. Fuck, that's what you want. Fuck, bubble or fuck. So these are, in my mind, these are the most valuable ones. <laughs> um, so which is the best one? Maybe this one, this 10 million, oh fuck, 10 million. <laughs> I don't know. I think any, any one of these would be good. All right, um, so 
Solana, Solana, no, Slurf. Okay, so let's just go back to Slurf quickly. Number 14. Let's have a look at 14. Like the, the devil? <laughs> you want the devil? <laughs> Literally the devil. You just need some horns. Uh, okay, so let me just go over this again quickly. So yesterday's uh, daily candle was nice. Uh, we had a little bit of reaction off the daily level. Nothing to be worried about. There was quite a nice long wick. That was your profit take. Uh, Bitcoin kind of SFP'd yesterday. So it kind of, there was a little bit of a pullback. But maybe that candle would have been much stronger if it hadn't been for Bitcoin. A little pullback on today's candle. We're pushing up. We're above the previous stay high. Uh, I don't really want us to come back underneath the previous stay high. Now that we're above it. So whatever happens, I think that will be that needs to hold the support obviously the daily level has to hold the support but we're way we're way past the daily level now so i'm not really thinking about the daily level um looking at these other candles uh you've got this red two-day red indecision candle um you know it's, it's these these indecision candles are quite tricky yeah because y y the price could go down but instead it's going up it's hard to trade these these ones in this situation. I think the the the, the hints, the clue here is this 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 green candle here. This these are massive buying tails. These are buying tails. That means that means people are buying. Yeah. So when you see these buying tails at the lows, and then you see this uh, two day candle, it closed above the previous two day high. That's quite a strong buying candle. So in the context of that candle, this red indecision candle is actually quite bullish. It's bullish. If it was green, it'd be bullish. If it's red, it's bullish. It's red, it's bullish because um, it means the bears are in control and they've basically failed to take the price down. Uh, they took the price down and the price was brought back up to above this previous uh, candle high. You see that? And actually today's candle has back tested that high and it's going up so the candles are forming actually they're forming quite nicely uh you can kind of read a lot into those candles to see that actually the price action is bullish what we need is continuation now we need continuation we can't just have the, the price struggling to get up we need the price to push up okay and so i think that could happen if bitcoin starts to move um but right now we still you know you don't want to get into a situation in the next two days i.e today and tomorrow where this candle just closes here underneath that wick because then you could you could easily see a sell-off okay what we really want is we want to we want to see explosive higher prices we want to, we want to go up we want to go up okay that would that would that's what we want to see um looking at the weekly candle again we want to go up you know you want you want to at, at the very least we, you want to push up as high as possible okay at the very least we want to reverse the previous week's candle and close higher at the very least that's what we want to do that would only take us into the first daily uh the the first day of untapped daily level if that was to happen so this might take some time to to play out yeah this is what i want to share uh right now the price is finding resistance of this 236 as you can see we're making higher lows yeah so for all intents purposes this is quite this is bullish but we're into resistance what we need to do is go up and then go up you know we need to do that yeah you want that's what you want to see if we don't go up yeah we're still bullish it's not bearish just because the price didn't go up it just means that we have to go back down to pick up some more liquidity it's hard because you break these patterns you know you've got this really nice pattern in these higher lows here 
uh, if you break it, you know, what's going to happen next? You know, that's what's going to happen next. Yeah, you're going to, it's going back down for liquidity. Do you go back down to the high volume node one more time? Or do you just come back into this daily level one more time? No one can predict that. Uh, but I, I, ideally, we want to continue this idea. Ideally, we just want to keep on pushing up, push up to the next level. And let's just go and, and make a higher high. That's what we want to do. We want this to continue. If this continues in the, this same trajectory, we'll be hitting a higher high by Sunday. Um, but we're not seeing the aggressive buying that that we want to see. Yeah, the aggressive buying where people are just absolutely uncontrollably bullish and they want to buy as much of this as possible. We're not seeing that yet. And so we have to see if that happens. OK, um, we're just seeing very people buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling, buying and selling. That's what we're seeing. Lots of buying and sellings here. Um, I did want to say one other thing. So right now we just need to flip these two intermediary levels into support. It's the two eight two three six. We're coming to test it for the third fourth time now. It should break, and then you've got this tapped this wash daily level that needs to flip. I think once we flip those two this area into support, we should go up to the next level quite quickly. That's three four two two. That's the daily level. Um, what you can do is you can just do a little range volume range pull on this this mini range here. Yeah, and you can just effectively what could happen is the price could kind of range here for a little bit, uh, hopefully to go up, but you know the price can always go down. So just be aware if if you range here, the price can always come back down for another test down here. Yeah, the price can always do that, and so just bear that in mind. And the way to know what's happening is just to have to follow this previous range. Okay. Uh, and so you've got the value area high, you've got the value area low, you've got the point of control, you've got this daily level. And what you'd be looking for is a little bit of range bound behavior here, a little bit of consolidation. And hopefully for another move up, we have to see what happens. The big resistance for me, though, is all the way up here uh, at the point of control of the overall range, this weekly level that's not been traded through, a daily level that's not been traded through and the the higher time frame 382 if we add, and also that you've got this radium value area low i'm not taking that too seriously if we get into this area here that's going to be major resistance it's basically a price range from starting at about 4060 through to 4228 okay it's gonna be a major area of resistance okay i want to see us get there and the main reason why I want to see us get there is because of the momentum. Yeah, we have to turn this momentum and the way to do it is to go up. Yeah, uh, right now we've had a, f a few weeks of down. Yeah, uh, and and the way to turn the momentum is to go up. Let me just pull my moving averages to see. Um, they're not always they're not all going to show. Like, look, see that. That's the 12 hour 50 moving average, simple moving average. Again, that corresponds to this daily level that I was telling you about, this first one. There's no reason why the price doesn't react here. You know, the price probably will, probably will react. You know, it is possible that the price goes up and it gets pulled right back down. It is, but if we don't have enough oomph in the explosiveness of this move, then you know you could easily get pulled right back down because of these moving averages so we do have a little bit of uh, um, a downward momentum that has to be flattened out and look at the daily look at the daily 50 simple moving averages it's it's heading down yeah look at that it's it's down so if the price does manage to get up there and there you know, it is possible for the price to do this, you know, just bear that in mind. Don't just think that just because I made a a video and I said the bottom was in that the bottom was in. <laughs> yeah. While I think that the local bottom is in, 
yeah for me that was a really strong local bottom potentially the bottom is in potentially this is the bottom this and this together are the bottom but i i can clearly see that there's a lot of downward momentum okay and then if the price does go up and find resistance guess what we're heading down yeah and guess where we're heading this low <laughs> triple bottom you know why not it's very possible don't think that just because uh, Bitcoin is showing a little bit of strength that it's not possible for the price to react and and not get to our main area of interest which is here for a short or a hedge I would want to see it there like the higher we go now um, the easier it will be to turn this this momentum yeah because that's what we want to do we want to turn the momentum that's why I want to see imp an impulsive move because it will help turn the momentum from down to flat yeah if we suddenly see an impulsive move now impulse impulse you know then what happens is this this moving average just starts to flatten out yeah uh, but if we go up and we start struggling at these intermediary levels this one first daily level the second daily level if you start seeing the price struggle really struggle to to move then you have to be careful be careful because you still have downward momentum and we haven't actually like this is a brand new 50 daily 50 moving average because it's a brand new coin and we haven't actually tested it even once yeah it doesn't look like it looking at the trajectory potentially maybe that would you could argue that was a test but there was no 50 periods to show to to prove that so this could potentially be the first test every time frame has its momentum okay and that's why we need an impulse because that's going to shift the momentum i think if you go back as far as the daily maybe the 12 hour you see the 12 hour you see you've got downward momentums and then what people will use are different moving averages sometimes emas you know it's all subjective when it comes to moving averages uh you know people have their preferences uh let me just see these are probably too high a frame uh, time frame let's have a look at the four hour you see the four hour again it's the same thing they kind of correlate that's the four hour em 200 ema um you see it's resisted once before in the past there's no reason why you would expect it to not resist again yeah now again the moving averages are, i don't really care about them as levels I'm only I'm really focused on volume and liquidity yeah but in terms of the momentum you can still see that the momentum is still down okay so even though potentially we have put in a bottom here potentially we potentially haven't as well and the reason why we potentially haven't is because if we go up and we we can't get up guess what's going to happen yeah you go down again yeah and so as long as um, we don't, like I, I'm looking at this, I don't really want to lose that trend line that we we broke. And let me have a look. That's the one. Okay. We've broken that trend line now. I don't want to lose it. And what I need to see happen now is a higher high. I need this higher high to happen. That would that would be confirmation of this move, a break, some kind of back test, and then continuation of the move, which will be a higher high here. Okay. I want to see that happen as soon as possible. That's my first confirmation of continuation. And then I want to see us power through to my area of resistance i want to see that okay i want to see us get there and that would give me a lot of confidence in this move okay uh making light work of these intermediary daily levels if we don't get there because one of these intermediary levels blocks the the path whether it's this one or the higher one then I don't think I want to lose this lower trend line either. But 
again it's going to look really bearish if we go up and then come all the way back down to take out this low so i don't even want to take out this low either okay so once we're in bullish market structure don't want to suddenly go into bearish market structure from bullish all the way down to bearish so i don't think that would look good effectively what i'd want is at the very worst case back test to continue yeah if you find back test to continue like that i'll be okay with that okay just can just higher lows higher highs let's get to our area of interest however long it takes maybe then you'd see a little bit of a sell-off and then we can we can have another go at it you know like something like that would be okay just to turn these moving averages around without losing this uh this outer lower trend line that we've kind of created without coming back in that like the worst case scenario would be to somehow f do that like you'd want you now that we've broken this trend line you don't want to come back underneath it yeah that would be bearish af yeah that would that would not look good okay so the first clue will be a market structure change so if you suddenly see market structure changing on the lower time frame then pay attention yeah don't ignore it um that's going to start at the five minute time frame okay so right now looking at the five minute time frame we've just put in a, a higher high here hold on let me just let me just figure this out hold on let me just i haven't done this yet hi high, high, high low hi hi low hi 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 low hi 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 low hi hi low low all the way down to here low high low low high high hi 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 low hi 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 low it's amazing but the low yesterday couldn't take out this low look at that couldn't take it out so this is your higher low all the way to a higher high high low high 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 low high high okay so we're in a tightening a little bit of a tightening range here can you see that and this is your low at um 0 0.3064 and the high is just there in the 236 the fib 236 just above 0 0.3159 <sighs> Gary's saying okay so we'll start NFT hype next week should help more people become interested 24 hour volume down a lot mm. so uh let's not take out this low now we've been putting in higher lows let's not suddenly change that <coughs> change that um behavior what we need to do is get above the 236 flip it into support flip the daily into support let's go up yeah let's go up that's what we need to do is let's go up um if we do make a lower low here i mean you've got resistance you've got support lines you've got this daily level and you can you can just do a volume range pull uh what 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 would i do in this situation there's two types of volume pull you could do here you could take it from the lows here maybe from where the impulse began you can see that we're kind of sitting above the value area high yeah from where the where this impulse began it's quite a good place to be find support on the value area and go up alternatively you could have a slightly wider volume area um, if you wanted to have it have this whole overall range don't know how far you'd go and see what's going on it says to say the 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 value area high here is where we've put in uh this higher low here you see that so 
the price is in a good place it's it's on top of support but it's also back into resistance okay the other thing that you could do potentially is just do a little volume pull on this range here this little mini range here and you can see exactly the same thing the price is just finding a little bit of resistance into the the value area high of this this previous range but what's actually happened is the value area low is offering support so we're into we're in a little mini range here in the previous range that we were in before that's bullish but now what needs to happen is we need to go up and we need to flip higher levels into support that's what needs to happen and what doesn't need to happen is we mustn't <coughs> go down and change market structure if for some reason we do go down here i want us to go right back up <coughs> excuse me we put in a lower low here we need to go right back up to put in a higher high otherwise you'll end up in a situation where you put in a low 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 high and then bam change you see that and if you see let's lose this uh daily level and fall back into this value area you're probably we're probably heading heading for lower probably yeah and it's still not like it's not for me it's not looking bearish but it just means that we're forming something else some kind of wider potentially a wider try if that happens then potentially we're forming some kind of i don't know i don't i don't like the idea of losing this this you see i don't like that idea it's uh there's something going on here with these lows It's not something going on here i don't really want to lose that whatever that is what i really wanted would like to see is a little break up okay so i don't want us to just suddenly go down i wouldn't get bearish just yet because the price can do that the price can go down and it just go right back up yeah um but obviously i don't want to see a change of market structure if i suddenly see a change of market structure i will hedge uh, for sure, Gary's saying thinking we need Sol at 180 to flip that next resistance. Well, Sol has been pumping as well. Uh, any questions on um, Slurf? It's quite good. The three day was good. Three day, the three day, the three day chart was good. Let me have a look at that. Look at that. That was like a bullish reversal candle engulfing closed higher. It's a really strong candle. That's that's the kind of candle you want to see at the lows. Um back above this previous three day low. Closed higher than the previous three day high. Uh perfect. Look at that. A little higher low here as well lots of good things here yeah i don't i don't want to see us honestly i don't want to see us the price to go all the way back underneath here at this level here that's uh i'll give you an exact figure like i can't predict the future so i don't know what's going to happen yeah for sure but i don't really want to see the price come under 2794 it's quite low but i don't want to see the price come underneath that level in the future let me see where that is. It is. It's still quite a way down, you see. That's why it's important to hedge if you see a change in structure. Yeah. It's actually above my entry. So it wouldn't affect me if I held, but I would want to hedge. Yeah. So if I suddenly see a change here that I didn't like, or maybe a swing, for, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm just looking at this. Like even a, even if the price goes up and swing failures, that would be a pretty good place to hedge, just in case we do suddenly go down like that. You know, I'm just kind of mindful of of a rejection, um, and obviously I, I'm not expecting it, but I'm mindful of it. So I wouldn't you wouldn't be careful because if you do get a rejection here. That being said, I mean, this is bullish, you know, like put in a higher high. 
it's bullish so it, it's tricky like I'd, i if you put in a higher high i wouldn't expect this at the very least i'd be thinking find support for continuation so i'm not sure i'm not sure but i do know that it, you don't want to be caught on a move without being hedged uh, my position is somewhere down here so i think i'm pretty safe if that pivot for me is that that's like the line in the sand now because when i'm looking at these uh candles yeah look at that we're back above that pivot in my mind that's like a little uh failed auction of the lows that was the that was the real strong candle because it's you've got this really nice green candle of a buy and tail this is a failed auction of the lows back above so technically that would be your sr flip or sfp it doesn't really matter so if we do if we do that that's fine that would be perfectly acceptable it would look okay and then the other the other level to bear in mind just looking at these candles um there's that major one there but that's that three five that that could act as a resistance as well just got to, let me just mark that off let me just see where that lands with the daily level it's just above the daily level so potentially that um Yeah, potentially that first daily level could prove problematic if the price gets into that range because you are into that range as well uh, where would i do it from yeah do you see that I think there's going to be resistance there if we go up there even though i'm eyeing higher up i just even in this first kind of area we could find resistance and that might coincide with bitcoin okay uh gary's saying still looking to add to long on a resistance flip It's going to be this daily level these daily levels are the ones to flip or the fib the fib level where's that fib this maybe if you want the fib problem is the fib yeah maybe the fib actually because you can see it's resisting see resistance 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 so yeah you'd expect a little back back test to hold the support the problem there is you don't want to lose it then <laughs> so but i don't think that's a problem it's just bear that in mind probably that two three six mm -hmm. you'd want a good you'd want to you'd want acceptance and so acceptance is technically classed as two 30 minute closes so i'm on the 30 minute time frame now you want two 30 minute closes above sometimes you get acceptance and it still falls underneath see that's one close that's two close three close and it still fell under until it found resistance so it's not always even if you see acceptance you could still get rejection but right now we get we're, we're not getting any acceptance let me have a look at um bitcoin yeah bitcoin is actually quite strong and slurf is trying to go up but it can't hmm. 